Uh, before we begin, just remember, don't stress too much on the drawing. Uh, enjoy the painting and don't stress too much if it's not the way, just the way I am painting. So just have some patience and just enjoy the whole process. Um, I'll explain step by step how to choose paints, how to mix colors, how to um, plan the whole painting. But before that, we need to draw it. I've done a very simple drawing here. And if you can, um, just to save time, always keep the drawing ready. These events are posted months in advance, so you can just click on it, click on the link and just um, draw the image. You can also take a printout and do a tracing just to save some time. And uh, here is the drawing. So I'll give you guys about 10 minutes to finish the drawing and then. OK, let's get started. Um, and you can keep drawing uh, if you're still not done, but I'll explain the process how we're going to go. Uh, now, in watercolors, um, we go everything by shapes and values. And by value, what we mean is lightness or darkness of something. So, for example, I'm going to paint this very light. So this is one value. Then I'm going to add more paint and this will give me another value. So this is how you're going to paint the whole uh, scene with different values. And the other thing that we need to remember is the various techniques of how we're going to paint. So for example, if I just paint it on a dry paper. This is called wet on dry, wet paint on dry. And while this is already wet, if I add more paint to it, doesn't matter what color, this is called wet on wet. So these are the two methods at least that we're going to use a lot. I don't think we're going to do a lot of dry brushing today. Uh, so this is very important to understand that these are the methods we're going to paint. And that will give this whole painting a very, very soft look. So this is what we're going to uh, keep in mind today. For colors, uh, as you can see, now I changed the colors a little bit uh, on my laptop to get a very nice um, peppy painting here. But you can put any colors. Like, for example, I almost changed the background of this whole thing because the plain background was too boring. And I added some nice complementary colors of red to like green and everything that really made this painting pop out. So this is very important. So that's what we're going to be going to keep the background very colorful and fun. And before we get started, you can see what are the colors that we're using. Now, like I said, you can make these eggs any color, but um, keep it consistent, keep it everywhere. And in my palette, you can see I've got two types of yellows. I have a brown, I have almost like a red pink tone. Uh, I have two blues, there's green, orange, and I'll see what are, color, what are the colors I'll use in, uh, in case I need to add more, but the camera doesn't let me see the whole um, palette. But I'll try to keep it uh, as close to possible so that you can see what I'm mixing. And those are the only colors that we're going to use. Now, how would we approach a painting like this? I know there's so many different colors here. As usual, I, we're going to start with the lightest value. Here you can see in the black and white picture, this egg, these eggs or these shapes, they almost look like there's no color at all. But obviously there is some. There's a very slight transition here, which you cannot see in black and white, but you can at least see which are the darkest areas, which are the lightest areas. So just like all my other paintings, I always start from light to dark. So we're going to start with these lighter areas. Okay, and then we're going to start adding, adding layers in the darker areas. Same with the shape, the chick, we're going to again, um, make it very light and then go ahead and add more darker layers onto it. I'm going to skip these flowers here that are here because that really complicates the whole background. So I'm going to skip that part. Uh, the rest, yes, we're going to paint this um, these uh, shapes as well. So let's get started. 
and I'm going to keep all my reference images close to me so that I can um, see where I'm going, how I'm doing. Always keep your reference images printed and close to you, or you can use your um, iPad or anything, whatever is comfortable, but I like it printed because it's just very convenient to go ahead and look at the colors. Um, I'll give you guys two minutes to set up your palette and then we'll get started by choosing our the lighter areas. If you have any questions, please let me know. I'll be happy to answer midway as well. And um, take your time, just enjoy the whole process. And that's what is the most important part. I'm not sure if everybody enters the peep show that I think the Washington Post used to have, I used to see many years ago. And that's a great show. Everybody decorates or make this fun scenes with the peeps. Um, that was the first time I saw what you could do with all those peeps that is sold at most places. It's a fun show. And I think they have contests and everything going on. All right. Let's get started. So I'm going to start with the really lightest, lightest yellow here. Okay. It's going to be very light, which means more water and less paint. Okay. And we can get started with these areas maybe. And wherever I can see this very light areas, I'm going to go ahead and give it a, a very light um, coat to it. So I'm done here. And then I can see mm, these light areas even here. What happens is this really um, speeds up the painting. Because we're going to paint in layers and some of the areas we want the layers to be dried before we head into the other areas. I'm going to go ahead and add some layers here as well. And if you want something soft, then uh, a lot of wet on wet is required. Next, I'm going to go to the bird or the large shape. I think the largest shape here. And really just dabble a lot of that color here and there. You can see it very clearly. Remember, this layer is going to dry so light um, that you probably have to go again and add some color to it. So don't be afraid at this stage. Your first stages have to be light. Um, and later, you can always come back and add color and fix it if it's not the right value. Values are very important in painting, any painting, because that's what it makes it look three dimensional. Even though this whole thing looks orange, I'm going to add a little bit of yellow because I do see a little bit of yellow there, the undertones there. Keeping it very soft. So you put some water to make it soft. Okay. So now then we let this dry. 
okay i'll guys give you a minute and then we'll come back and start the other areas okay Even this area, I forgot this area. So yes, we're going to add some of the yellow. Okay, next we can go um, add a little bit of pink here and whatever pink you have, you can go ahead. You can see I have this very nice uh, pink here. And like I said, we're going to work into layers. So I'm going to make this super light. While it is wet, I'm going to add some little bit of more color on this side than the other on the top here. Because it's almost like blending. So to give that kind of effect, we're going to work uh, wet on wet. While it's uh, quite wet. I can add a tad bit of orange here. Oops, that's a bit too much, but that's okay. It's a colorful egg anyways, so I'm not too worried about what the color is. It's mostly what the value is. Okay, that's very important. I'll leave that area as it is. Then we'll move on to the other area. Maybe we can move here. Okay, and you can see a lot of color has moved into the other area. This is totally fine. You can see there's so much overlapping of orange and pink and yellows because the light is reflecting. All these uh, eggs or shapes, whatever color is on them, they're reflecting on the other and vice versa. So there's a lot of amalgamation of colors that's going to happen here. So I'm not really worried if this color is running into this one or that one. It's totally fine. And um, this is a, we can go here, okay? And same way, I'm going to take this color. This one I'm going to do wet on wet, and I'll show you how I'm going to do. I'm going to just wet this area with clean water, okay? And then, Okay, this is way too wet. See, all the colors are coming, but no need. That's fine. And then I'm going to take some color here and just dabble in areas where I want it to look darker. Same, add a bit of orange, pink. can see as this this comes in the middle there isn't much paint I'm going to lift some with a clean paper 
because I want some areas without any paint. Okay, done with this area. Next, we can follow on this area. You can see it's almost like an orange tone with some browns here. All the pink and oranges, everything is coming. It's, it's a carton. It's a brown carton, but so much of light is reflecting that it doesn't look brown. It looks very orangish, right? So you can mix a little bit of orange and a little bit of brown here, keeping it light because like I said, we can always add color, but we don't add too much that we cannot remove it as some colors are staining. And they're hard to remove. So I just mix a bit of orange and a little bit of brown, maybe a tinge of pink as well. Like I said, everything has been reflecting everywhere. So this is going to give a really nice mix. I'll let this dry because I don't want to mix here. Everything is running into uh, each other uh, where I don't want. So I'll give this a break. Next, moving on, we'll move on to these smaller areas. Has a bit of yellow. With some, again, brownish, orange. It's quite a little dull, but that's okay. I'm going to take a little bit of blue here. Okay, we we'll leave this area, come back um, maybe to this area. This is dried almost. I think it dried too much, so I'm just going to wet slightly. With clean um, water. And then again, I see a reflection of the oranges here again. Um, and this area, orange and a little bit of um, brown. I'm going to take a bit of that and not the whole area, but just the half of that kind of a semicircle you can see a tad bit. Just enough to coat the area, not moving into just leaving one layer of yellow to see outside. Okay. Good. A bit of yellow here. Okay. And then I'll wait. I'll give you guys a minute to catch, and then we'll continue to paint our layers. I'm just fixing some. Areas here, a bit harsh. Okay, moving on. Um, this is quite wet, but so I'll wait. Uh, we'll finish this area that's darker. 
brown and orange mix, more of brown, I would say. I'm making the brown a bit dark by adding a little bit of blue into it. That part is good. Um, same way, going around the corner, you can see again a bit of those brown shades. Then coming on top, here there are a lot of layers of orange and brown. Less of brown, more of orange. So I'm going to take a bit of orange here. Orange and even a bit of reds mix. And first we're going to cover this, sorry, this layer. This is quite orange. And then leave it. I'll let this dry and then come back, we'll do on this area. But this area is ready so you can take even bit of the other yellow that i have a bit of darker red here in the end yeah okay. while this is drying we can move on this area in the end corner and add some layers a bit of orange here because it became too dull and same here with some orange and red uh, layers. Look, I keep moving back and forth with orange, red, browns, because those are the colors I see. If you see something different, feel free to add that because everybody sees things differently. Okay, May maybe you see more shadows, right? So this is what I'm trying to do. Just adding layers here wherever I can. And I, these are the colors I'm choosing. So I go back and forth with those colors. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be the exact way it is. I just try to keep it consistent with my palette. Some extra orange here, some yellow here. This ran out a little, and there's some problem with this paper. It's giving me a hard time today. I don't know what is it. It's bleeding a lot. I don't know. It's better. Let this dry because it's all too wet. And then we can do the yellow ears. The yellows are really nice and bright. So we can add some there. Okay. 
I'm going to add the other yellow here, a bit darker, a little bit of orange to darken this area. Tiny bit of a darker orange here. Okay. Next, um, since all this is really wet, how about we go to the big bird here? Now we already added a layer here. So you can take a very small brush here and we can take some yellow mixed with some other darker yellow. I want you to do the ochre, but I don't have right now. So I'm going to add a tiny bit of that brown into that yellow just to make it darker than this. And I think this is already quite dry. So before I drew the feathers, I'm just going to wet it slightly. I'm going to wet it slightly and let it dry for like two minutes or a minute or something until it loses a sheen. And go ahead and take a little drier paint, not too wet, not too watery, because it's just going to start going apart. Look, if I start now, it'll start bleeding. So, but I don't want that. I want stiff paint here. So I'm just going to wait for a minute. And then get that yellow paint here and then start. Not yet. It's too wet yet. So I'm just, the minute I put the brush on it, it'll start bleeding. It'll just form a puddle. Feathers are a bit complicated, not because of technique, it just takes time. And if you want it to look um, very soft, then uh, you just have to have a very lighter hand of how you uh, move your strokes. And the strokes have to have a direction. It's still quite wet, so I'm just waiting. You need to have a direction of what the feathers look like in the picture. Um, that's what gives it a very realistic look. You can even take a little bit of orange here. I usually have a different brush to do the feathers. I cannot find it today, but you can see that I'm just taking a little darker orange on this side. And then Just going into the direction and adding orange or yellowish tones on it. Trying to keep it very soft by very lightly moving the brush on the paper. Um, and again, you don't have to do every single feather here. Uh, you just never be able to finish this painting. But just get the uh, nag of it about how to move the brush in different directions. And just keep looking at the picture to see where I need to move the brush next. Mostly orange tones here, nice and dark. 
And we may have to add two layers of these feathers to once, you know, they dry. This area too, orange. You can mix a bit of red just to make it darker. So it's like an orange red kind of a mixture. A bit of darker areas here in the corner. Even you can take a pinch of red here to get these dark areas just to define where the edges are. Some brown as well. It's coming along. It's very slow, but it's coming along. Same way we're going to go on top. And see some areas have our orange outlines or yellow outlines. And I'm just going to take these areas with some yellow and some orange and complete the feathers, same wet on wet, very soft strokes here, very light values, except for some areas. You can also use a tinge of browns here and there because they're so varied. There's so many values of different colors here. This is wet. I'm just going to add some darker areas. I think it probably went a bit too dark, but that's okay. I like bright birds. Okay. So we can stop here with this area. It's going to soften a few edges. And then we can come to the other areas and see where we need to add. I'll give you guys a minute to catch. We don't have much less, probably 15, 20 more minutes. And then we'll do the background, which is really the best part. A lot of different colors. Background is a bit, bit challenging in this area because, you know, too many humps here, ups and downs. But again, you know, we can just be very free flow and enjoy the whole process. Any questions, please let me know. And uh, I'll be happy to answer. If you have any questions regarding the uh, materials I use, um, uh, feel free to email me at meghawatercolor at gmail.com. I'll be happy to share where I buy my materials. They always have used discounts going on. And um, yeah, you can just get good, good materials. Start with good materials. They always give you better results. Um, doesn't matter even if you're a new artist, brand new artist, but just get started with good materials always. All right, so we'll get started here with some more orange.
And I'll take a little bit of darker yellow here. And paint this area that's little more on the like the shadowy side or the darker side. And then for a while it's wet, I'm going to take some orangish brownish to add more layers to it. a bit of darker brown here just to give some definition okay same way i'm going to add, go ahead and add some darker areas here to define this cotton Just softening this area. This area has a bit of dark here. And here, I'm going to wet this area slightly because I need more pink. Tinge of orange, mostly pink, to darken this whole shape. Okay. This also need a bit of Pink here. Bit of yellow. So you have to keep coming back and forth to change it because watercolors dry light. And sometimes you have to readjust the values. Okay. I think this area is good now. I'm not going to touch it. Uh, maybe a bit of brown here. And some areas here. Okay. a few outline here when this whole dries we'll do the eye but until then we'll just see where we can add any values here yeah we need it here so we're going to go ahead a bit of orange and pink It's a bit too dark, but that's okay. These areas as well, where I think the shadow of the flowers.
on this egg or shape, you can see that there is this light in between that's, um, you know, giving this kind of texture. Um, I thought of doing this, but then it could really complicate the whole painting. So I'm skipping this part, but it really looks nice. You know, when you do this thing, it, it really pops out. I think you can see I've done it in this, my uh, painting that I tried at home. So it's a lifting technique, actually. You paint it and while it's half wet, you lift the whole uh, area with some paint. It's a fun technique, but I think this it's be too much to do it in the same class. Again, looking at my black and white picture, I'm just looking where I can add some dark areas. And this is what I see. There's some dark areas here. Taking some browns, adding some darks. And I even add some blues here to make it dark. All right, I think we are going good. Uh, I think once everything dries, I'm going to give one more coat of nice light yellow because see the yellow dried very light. I can barely see any yellow here. So we're going to do that later. But before that, let's get into the background. Now, how are we going to do this colorful background? Well, what I usually do is I just mix up some paint uh, on my palette and I just start something uh, complementary colors or something really opposite to get going and then add uh, different colors where I, as I go. There's no really rule to it, uh, but just keep it consistent. Whatever you have used in the painting, put that in the background to make it look consistent. So that's the whole point of the uh, creating a nice colorful background. So I'm just going to make some nice uh, puddle of paint. Uh, some area is going to be darker, some lighter, uh, some blues, some purples, a uh, lot of fun uh, colors here. I know you can't see the whole palette, but I'm just mixing some blues. I'm making some purples here and uh, I have green. Some purples here. So we can start maybe from this area and go this way, any way you want. Around the edges is going to be a little challenging because I want to get that fuzzy feeling of uh, the chicken, but uh, we'll try as much as possible and maybe lift a little bit of color, but let's see. So you can do in two ways. First, either wet the whole background with some water. That way, what's going to happen is the, the paint will flow very easily. Or you can do it dry. I always prefer the wet on wet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wet the whole area, area uh, sorry, the background area with some wet water. Be very careful not to get any water inside. And this way, the, the paint flows very uh, Freely, because remember the water the water is the vehicle for paint so it's already got a medium there so as soon as you throw some paint it'll start moving that's the beauty of watercolors the the medium it's the uh, water is the vehicle so that's the fun part and then it can just move the paint very quickly it really depends what's the kind of effect you want.
All right. I'm going to start with some nice dark purples here. Rima, there is no really uh, sequence here. I am just dabbling colors. Sometimes I just like that way. But it's up to you how you want to make this. But see how fast the water just is helping the paint move. Right? And see, I got some green here. So what happens is that pink or red that is close to, it's got a close complementary color here. This really captivates the painting, the viewer, because complementary colors create some fun setting. And it really creates um, a good composition. That's why it's important to plan your colors, how you're going to place them. Good paintings um, are good because of some reason that they are very skilled uh, in terms of composition of how the colors are planned. I cannot move my painting because it is stuck on the table, but usually I just move it around so that the paint moves and mingles with the other layers. Um, but uh, that's okay. You should move your painting so that the colors just mingle by itself and the water watercolor does its own thing. That's the fun part of watercolors. So, let this dry. We just have one last thing to do, and that is the eye. But before that, let's check what can be added here. I still feel we need to soften these edges. Maybe add a bit of dark paint here. These can also be darkened slightly. Always come back and check your paintings many times because as the layers dry, you'll see that there's always some um, value problem. So it always helps to come back to your painting the next day and see it with fresh eyes. Don't try to paint for long hours at a stretch because remember you too close to the painting and what happens is we just see it in one dimensional way and with some distance or with fresh eyes you actually come and see where you're lacking uh, I got a problem here but that's okay <laughs> the paint dried that's fine um, so it's very important that you always reevaluate your painting. To make it look three dimensional. So I think. 
pretty good here. Okay, we are just left with the eye, but I'll give you guys two minutes to catch up. Um, I know there's a lot going on with too many colors here. I don't know how many of you actually paint every day in watercolors, but uh, if you do, then definitely work on these foundational techniques every day, even just for five minutes. Just take two colors and see how you can mix it in different ways, either in the palette or on the paper. But painting every day strengthens your painting muscles. Uh, just like exercising every day strengthens your body muscles. If you just do on and off, then you'll always going to be a little more frustrated because, um, yeah, either you're forgotten or it's not the way you were hoping it. But um, there's so many ways you strengthen your muscles, your painting uh, muscles, not just by holding how you hold your paintbrush. It also depends how much water you're taking, your direction of the strokes, your planning, planning techniques, uh, your uh, vision of how you see the painting as an end product, even when you have not started it. All those things um, come together or uh, is done in a better way if you paint every day. It's the only way to get better. And no matter what medium you paint, acrylics, oils, pastels, or even if you do charcoal or you do drawing, make sure you do it every day, even if it's for five minutes. Um, I'm doing this challenge. I'm doing the 75 day challenge where I have to paint every day. And if I miss a day, I restart the whole challenge. Uh, this actually gives me like a push to no matter what, paint every day. So if you haven't yet, take the challenge, do it with me if you like, email me. And uh, that way, yeah, we can all paint together and uh, do something creative together. So we just have last small part to paint. And that's the eye. I'm going to add a tad bit of orange into these eye area. It's a bit hazy and then a bit of gray. How do you make gray? Well, you can mix uh, brown and blue together. So make like a grayish area here and let it dry and then take darker gray that's blue mixed with, with some brown I know this is almost making like a greenish thing because <laughs> this burnt sienna is so like red. Make the eye and also a little bit of outlining here. I did lose the beak here. I think the paint just ran inside too much. That's okay. We did a lot of it already. Yeah, I did lose the beak here, didn't realize. That's okay. Um, But just take some darker orange or red and paint this area. A lot of color got into it. That's okay. I'm just going to soften it.
I think this looks good. Mm. The rest is we have to let it dry and maybe add one or two layers, but I think right, pretty, right now it's pretty, pretty um, wet. Once it dries, I can fix this beak. But right now it's so wet, I got into it, but that's okay. Yeah, I think that's okay for now. We know the beak is there, but that's fine. I think that's it uh, for this painting. Uh, I think we have covered almost all the areas. And uh, yeah, I think this is good. If you have any questions, do let me know. Send me an email. Uh, please. Complete your paintings and send me for a feedback. I'll be happy to give you a written feedback. Um, anytime. It, it doesn't have to be this week. It could be anytime, whenever you finish it. Thank you so much, everyone, for uh, joining in today's workshop.